This week on Health News, we have for you information on a specialty in the medical field that is considered the second most commonly used in medical tests after laboratory tests. I'm talking about radiography. Did I hear you say, what does that mean? Well, the acting registrar of the Radiographers Registration Board of Nigeria, Mr. Michael Opaleke, will be telling us all about this and why you need to ask questions when it comes to medical imaging. We'll be right back with stories from around the health world. We start off the new segment in Abuja, where the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, has expressed concerns over the persistent accreditation crisis confronting the University of Abuja and the medical students of the College of Health Sciences. Following the protest by the students earlier in the month, the NMA says it has met with all parties concerned and having had a comprehensive review of the issues, is calling on the governing council of the university to take drastic decisions to reduce the tension, allay the apprehension of the students, and formulate a strategic plan of action with possible timelines to actualize the plans. While urging that appropriate sanctions be meted out to any individual or group of persons that have contributed in the stagnation of the medical students of the University of Abuja, the NMA is also requesting that the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria ensure that no institution ever admits a student into its approved medical program until it has secured the first accreditation. I'm expecting you to shepherd. Here in Lagos, this gathering of some teachers in the state to learn how to identify mental health challenges in school children is at the instance of the College of Medicine, University of Lagos and its partners. After 60 hours of intense learning support, remediation, 60 hours. The resource persons here agree that attention deficit, hyperactivity, and autistic spectrum disorders are some of the mental health challenges some children face and if not properly identified, could be misconstrued. We know that children spend most of the time with the teachers, a lot of time with the teachers. And what we're trying to do is that if teachers understand um, how their children are doing in their classrooms, their expectations would be objective would be reasonable and they can also identify children that may even have challenges and refer appropriately. Any child that has an emotional or behavioral problem that has early intervention, usually they do better. If a child isn't doing well, don't spank the child. Maybe the child has a learning disability, so take them for an evaluation. Maybe they have a disability or some other condition like attention deficit disorder that can be treated. You know, a lot of kids um, who have this disorder, attention deficit, they're put on medication and they do fine. They go from being at the bottom of the class to being at the top of the class because they had a problem that was identified. But if we don't identify those problems, they'll keep having problems and then they may become academic failures and dropouts. You know, other kids may become what we call area boys. But early intervention matters. So both parents and teachers, all of us need to work together. Parents, teachers, and the medical profession. We all need to work together. To Nutrition Matters Now. Although many low- and middle-income countries have policies in place to tackle undernutrition, often the major health threats of overweight and obesity are neglected. This information is worrisome to the World Health Organization as it issues a consolidated package of 24 essential nutrition actions which outline the most effective ways countries can improve their people's nutritional status by preventing both undernutrition and overweight. The interventions to help countries close these policy gaps include improving nutrition of pregnant and breastfeeding women, encouraging early initiation of breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months, then continued breastfeeding up to two years, promoting appropriate solid foods for young children, and providing micronutrient supplements and fortified foods when needed. The director of the WHO's Department of Nutrition for Health and Development, Dr. Francesco Branca, said, quote, To avoid a massive explosion of nutrition problems in the next generation, policymakers urgently need to give more attention to improving the nutritional status of pregnant women and adolescent girls who will become mothers of the next generation. End of quote. 
Over to Ireland, where the first recorded case of leprosy in modern times has been reported to the health authorities in the Irish Republic. The patient, a Brazilian who has been living in Ireland for several years, had suffered a recurrence of his leprosy, having first contracted it in Brazil 10 years ago. In an article compiled by specialists in infectious diseases for the Irish GPS magazine Forum, the man is suffering from tuberculosis leprosy, or sarcoidosis. The Irish Health Service executive has confirmed it was notified about the case in January. Leprosy was not designated a reportable infectious disease in Ireland until last year. Hansen's disease, or leprosy, is caused by the bacterium Mycobacterium leprae, and India has the highest number of infections, followed by Brazil. Leprosy is difficult to contract, and it's not known exactly how it is transmitted, although prolonged close contact with an affected person is needed. In the past two decades, global prevalence of leprosy has been reduced by almost 90 percent. Not good news now coming from Valencia Hospital La Fe in Spain, where it's been confirmed that the world's first double leg transplant patient has had his legs amputated. The amputation was carried out after an unrelated illness forced the man to stop taking anti-rejection drugs. The hospital said treatment of the unspecified illness was more urgent.